Hello and welcome to another Tuesday at two. It is Better Together with Rebel Coach. And today we are lucky to have Annie Tuttle with us. After experiencing the loss of her mother, Annie threw herself into philanthropic work when she realized that something was missing. She decided to open a juice bar of all things to honor her mom and her healthy lifestyle. She later sold the juice bar and put her energy into her family business, which was the, or still is, the Ancient City Brewery. Now as CEO, she looks for creative marketing strategies and stays on top of industry trends along with her role as CEO. She has recently become the communications and grants officer for Community Hospice and Palliative Care Foundation in Jacksonville, Florida and that supports individuals and families coming to terms with grief. Annie, we are so glad you are here. Thank Welcome. you for having me. Thank you. I'm excited <laughs> to be here. <laughs> well, on behalf of me, Allison Nissen, and my sister, Marcy Stout, let's go ahead and jump into our conversation. That's her sister. Let me just make sure I'm on you. <laughs> so let's start with, with just your story. How did all this begin? Oh, goodness. So um, I, I, I always go back to going through um, cancer or any sort of terminal illness with a parent is, is extremely challenging. And I was very young when my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer and she lived, I, you know, I always say she never, she lived with breast cancer and she lived a beautiful, wonderful life. And we were so blessed and so grateful. Um, because of the experience that we had, all the, you know, all the things that go into that and as, as challenging that, as it was, it was actually a, a wonderful blessing. And that was kind of where she was in the hospice program. And so we were very fortunate to have all the goodbyes and all the great moments and all the travels and all the experiences um, because, of, because of her illness. So um, after she passed, it was a struggle. I mean, I, you know, as, as, much as um, as positive as I was and as great as it all was, once after she was gone, you kind of I kind of lost that, you know, almost a little bit sense of relief because she wasn't struggling anymore. And then I just started really, really missing her. And she was so young. So I was trying to figure out like, what can I do and how can I mourn and still move forward. I have four children. I've got a family and a life. And what can I do to um, honor her? I think is really where it started for me is how do I honor her? How do I get her story out there? I mean, she wasn't famous. She wasn't, you know, anything, you know, a big, huge person or anything like that. But I wanted her story to be out there because it was such a beautiful story. And part of that story was healthy living and uh, mind over matter. And she would tell her doctors, you know, 50% of it's on you and 50% of it's on me. And she would take care of her body, just the whole thing. So I really was, that was really where it started. And it was really, honestly, selfishly, it was more therapeutic for me to do something to honor her. That's wonderful. I feel like Annie, it's such like a beautiful story when you start talking about the journey of being by her side, especially if she's young. And then it enters into like, how do I get her story out there? So you decided to go into the juice business. And luckily for me, it was in my hometown. So I was <laughs> the recipient of loss and like best juice bar ever, like really. Um, but it, it was kind of on the earlier stages. It wasn't that trendy in this area. Can, can you just walk us through like how you chose that lane to tell her story and what that was like in just figuring out like, yeah, this is the one we, we want to start with. So it's kind of a funny, um, it, it is actually kind of funny. We were um, in Atlanta and I visited a juice bar and I was like, this is a, this is really cool. And I kind of laughed. My mom used to make me um, drink wheatgrass shots before wheatgrass mm -hmm. was cool. And it was disgusting. So yummy. Mm. Oh, I mean, <laughs> and she worked at a health food store at the health food store in Ponte Vedra. And really she just, um, she worked there just kind of part-time because she was going through treatments and everything. And her focus was on helping women in the community who had breast cancer on the right vitamins to take and the, you know, the holistic approach kind of to help with um, whatever treatments they were going through. And so we were driving back from Atlanta and I'm sitting in the car with Greg and I'm like, I want to open up a juice bar in Jacksonville. We don't have one. And he kind of looked at me and he's like, well, we're opening a brewery. I said, I know. I know. 
and we're going to do the juice bar too. And he's like, all right, let's do it. We're in whatever we need to do, you know? And it just was one of those where it was like literally in the car ride home. And I'm just like, okay, let's do a juice bar. And we got back and we found a place for it. And then we just kind of, it went from there. So that was kind of, I mean, it was really just, again, just, it was all about, and then it was all about her after that, like in her story. Annie, okay, that is really funny because, you know, I've been married, a lot of people have been married, we get how our spouses have one idea about how things are going to work, and then all of a sudden we're like, no, we're going to throw a wrench in it, and we're going to open up two things at the same time, right, and you to, like piggyback on like business plans and things like that. Oh, I mean, it was, it, it was actually just, it was a whirlwind. I mean, I remember and people looking at us like, you guys have lost your minds. I'm like, yes, we have. And it's great. <laughs> and we're going to just, I mean, we're, we're going in, throwing it all in. And, um, and it's almost like, like I said, it was extremely therapeutic because it threw me into just craziness and busyness. And it was good. I mean, it really was, it was a lot of fun. Um, and we were on two different, two different areas, but it was still, it was, it was a, a, the kids too. watching the kids see it happen was just uh, very funny too. <laughs> I can only imagine. So a lot of our members are women that are either on the early stages of starting something, or they're actually just wanting to reinvent themselves and start something new. So if somebody that is watching this and like, all right, I want to start something you know, new. Can you just walk us through a little more details? Like, was it franchise or how did you kind of run the numbers? Like, how did you know, actually invest? I mean, to start a juice bar, there's a lot of expenses to it. You know, you got to have the building, the machines, the, you know, cash flow and everything. So how did, how did you figure out like the due diligence? Does this make sense? So I just, I mean, Fortunately, as we have a wealth of information available at our fingertips, you know, there's so much that you can find online, you can um, research, you can go through the process, and then you always just add more to it, whatever it is you think it's going to be, you always add more, but, um, you know, we started, we definitely started with our, with the major costs, you know, the cost of the, the building, the cost of the equipment, um, food costs, trying to keep things very, I wanted to keep things organic. So then we had to figure out like, how much do we, you know, do we charge for a bottle because we're trying to keep things organic and it, the cost of produce and, um, the bottle cost and overhead. And I mean, just the whole thing. So there was, there's a lot of components to it. And you really, I mean, the best thing you can do is just sit down and, and plan it out. Look at what other, other, industries are doing within the same, within the same field. Um, and just be, I mean, it, it really just be prepared. I mean, cause it's never going to cost, it's going to cost more than what you think if you're looking at it from a financial standpoint, and it's going to be more work than you, than you think it's going to be. Um, and having a good support system and having people around you who are supporting you and cheering you on along the way definitely helps a lot. I could see that. I mean, and what I love just in hearing the story at the, at the highest level, it's really just choosing something to do and then do the diligence to research and, and make decisions as you go along to not complicate it. Cause you really went from like idea to launch fairly quick. Like there wasn't quite a blueprint for you to be following. And it really, you know, like I said, very successful. The brand was great. I love that, how it celebrates your, your mom and everything. So the brewery is going on at the same time. And eventually you decide to switch lanes and go more to the family business of the brewery. Um, what's different in that? Like, can you share a little bit more like what that's, um, you know, that experience in terms of running a brewery? <laughs> totally different. <laughs> Although we did like to mix our tequila with some of your Watts. I think it was like number 60. <laughs> we did. We definitely did. That was always a fun, um, the mixing of the juices and the, the liquor was great. Um, the, the beer business is a, a totally different business. Um, and there's um, so many different levels of it, which is why Greg and I both being involved in that is huge because the parts that he really manages um, as far as like the brewers, the brewing aspect of it, the actually getting in there, making the beer. Um, I'm great at taste at tasting the beer. I do know it tastes good, <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, keeping managing that part of it and the distribution network um, because you're, you know, you're distributing to other restaurants and bars and to the grocery stores. And so you have to have a solid team in place for that. So it's totally different. So we have like our, we have our brewers and we have a brewer, brewing team. We have our bartenders and, you know, our bar team, 
and then you have our sales team. And so you have so many different components and so many different parts of it. Um, and then on top of that, you've got to have your marketing team and you've got to be staying on top of the trends. And as things are changing, especially in the craft industry, because things are constantly changing and you have to have all those components in place for it to be a successful brewery. Um, a lot of times the smaller breweries may be missing one part of it. And that's why they either stay where they're at or they don't grow or, you know, just different things change. And so it's been, that's been key in keeping that business, you know, going and where the business is. Um, and again, totally different than the juice business because you are looking at a distribution network with that. So it's not just a, it's not a, just a shop that they're coming into. This is going out everywhere. So. And I know that you were inspired by your mom and all the, the tragedy or trauma that came along with that to start the juice bar. And with the brewery, have you been able to emphasize the philanthropy, philanthropic, easy for me to say, portion She's been drinking. of your, it's your, good. Heart, your heart and soul? <laughs> yes, I have. And a and unfortunately, we have such a wonderful team who gets behind just any any project, anything that um, I kind of throw at them. And I do that, again, often very much like I do to my husband, like, oh, hey, so guess what? This is what we're going to do. And this is another um, component of it. So we have, um, we do a, a charity a month. Um, just this month, obviously with breast cancer awareness, we're doing pink up the pace and we do, uh, last month was the Kate Amato foundation. So we definitely, we pick a charity a month. We do some sort of fundraising for that charity and promoting the charity. And we try to keep it very small localized charities. Um, and so that's always been a big part of the brewery is giving back to the community. Um, and I think that's just important when you own a business, when you're capable of doing it and finding ways to, to give back. And then, of course, now with um, me taking on a full-time role at Community Hospice, we're launching some, some fun things with that as well. Can you share any secrets? Oh, I mean, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, um, we are going, we're looking at launching a, we're in the very early stages, the very early planning stages of it, but we're looking at launching a beer for the foundation um, that we will put out there to all the restaurants and bars and um, with, a pro with a portion of the proceeds coming back to the foundation. So that's going to be huge. Again, here, you know, having that as a resource and an outlet to be able to uh, get the information and get the, the foundation, the Community Hospital and Palliative Care Foundation's name out there and what they do in the community, because it is, I mean, it's a wonderful organization. So what does that look like? So does that mean like you got to have a graphic, like the marketing for the label for the beer? Like what are some details to make it come to life? So you have to, I sat down with the marketing team and we're, we have to come up with it. You want to come up with a name and you want to come up with the logo um, and a design for it. And then you have to sit with the sales team and talk about the approach on how to talk with the, you know, um, Rest, restaurant and bar owners and getting that message out there. And then also talking with the community hospice marketing team and making sure that it all falls in line with their standards and what makes sense for them as a foundation or for us as a foundation, I should say. Um, so it's definitely, there's a lot of, of moving parts to it. And then of course the launch. And then on the back end of all of that is the back end work of making sure um, all, all it's all tracked the right way and that we know you know how much are we selling of it and how much are we giving back and who's giving back because everybody you know there's there's three there's three people involved the distributors the bar and restaurant owners and then us of course so there's a lot to it but it's definitely well worth it um any again anytime you can you you have an outlet and a way to to get the message out there it's I just think you definitely should go for it yeah, that's great. So, you know how they always say, like, you know, when you're, when you're stressed or you're feeling, you know, you've got too much going on. One of the best cures is to volunteer for another cause because it puts your world in perspective. It makes you grateful for what you have and things like that. So with the brewery, it, you know, and like your mom's story, it's so like present and it's so like, you know, your passions, you're aligned there. Like how, how does that kind of like advice in general at the human level. Um, like, how does it apply with a brewery? It seems like you're handling so many different things, running the business, and now you're adding an extra thing to your plate, which is still kind of like a part of the beer distribution part. So can you just, you know, can you share a little bit more about like the, the um, I don't know, the rewards to doing something like that? Oh, I mean, 
absolutely. Again, you know, um, and I mean, also just adding to, you know, this past year losing my dad and trying to find, again, just being kind of stuck in that same spot of like a way to, to give back, to do the right things to, um, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a challenging time, I think for everybody. And especially with, you know, COVID and everything, we're all kind of in that kind of wheel of trying to figure it all out. I, I feel like everybody's kind of revamping and removing and moving and doing different things. And so, being able to do both and being able to have the business and be a part of the business and take in, on the position at the foundation and knowing that between both of them, being able to get the message out there um, and work the, work with the foundation on the communication side of it. It's just, it's extremely rewarding. It's, I mean, and it all kind of, it's all just work and it has all been working together, which is when this has been great. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. So, um, on a like a how you're doing it all um, type questions, kind of switching gears a little bit. What's your advice for like a solo, like somebody that's like starting a business and then managing so many things? You already mentioned you have four children. <laughs> so there's there's more to you than so much, you know. Um, so I'd love to know just like you know your advice on how you kind of keep track of everything and how you lead your teams. So the, the biggest advice I can give anybody is just to be kind to yourself and know that it's not going to be perfect and you're going to make mistakes and there is, there is no perfect scenario and something is always going to fall to the wayside. There, I mean, and, and it does just, you know, whether it's the, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten about something with the kids or through work. I mean, even, you know, at, at any point in time. So you have to just, you have to give yourself a lot of grace and understand that um, there is there is no perfect scenario and that you just, you just keep powering through it. And every day you just wake up and you go, okay, this is what I have to do today. And it's kind of become a joke in the house where the kids will say, Hey mom, so on Friday. And I'm like, today's Monday, we're going to get through Monday. We'll talk about Friday on Friday, you know, and that's really where I think I just, I just try to just take it day by day. And I know that seems so simple, but that really is it. That's all you can do. You cannot think too far in advance. How does, so I'm, I'm a big believer in finding harmony within your life, not balance, because balance, like you said, you worry about Monday on Monday and Friday on Friday. <laughs> but when you have harmony, you can at least get all the pieces sort of flowing in the same direction. Do you have your kids help you with a lot of this stuff? Do they help balance any of this? They give you inspiration? They, for sure. Um, absolutely. One, I mean, I, I love... I love my girls seeing, you know, what I'm doing. And I love the boys seeing a woman doing what she's doing and their mom doing it, you know, and the, just that to me is huge. Um, so that, they give me inspiration through that. Um, the, and they do, I mean, they definitely balance it out. They help a lot. They're older. So it does make it a little bit easier for me. I don't know if I could have done all of this when they were younger. I was fortunate when they were younger. My mom was here. She was helping. She was always around. I mean, I didn't, I had, you know, great support with her. Um, so with them being older and Greg and I both being able to kind of do our thing and know that they're capable of, of not taking care of themselves, but they're capable of getting themselves pulled together. Um, or I should say most of the time, I mean, this morning was a little different. We had some missing <laughs> items in the car and some conversations about having to keep it pulled together. But um I think that, you know, they definitely, they, they help with that for sure. And they do, they inspire. I, it would be easy for me to, to, to become complacent and not do some of the things that I want to do because I know that they need me, but I think at the same time, it's kind of nice for them to have to do it on their own and realize, Hey, listen, I can't help today. I'm, I'm busy. I've got this going on and this is important to me. I think it's good for them to see that. Well, you're so good about um, like, as I hear you talk and as I know you personally, like you're very good about setting boundaries and being present. Like, I think a lot of people don't even know, you know, what you're doing behind the scenes with all your business stuff. And what I love is the quote that, that you were saying is like, it's good for your kids to see you go for it. Like to, to see what mom's doing or dad's doing. And like anytime a parent is swinging for the fences and their children are watching it. And if you're doing it gracefully and you're still you know, very present, it's, it's better than the words we'd say because they're seeing it by example. So I just, I'd love to compliment you on that. It's so, it's amazing. <laughs> I have a quick question. Do we have yes. time? Yeah, um, absolutely. It, I wanted to know if I could back to her. I have a couple of friends 
who are looking to kind of start a business, their next thing, business is different. But where they're struggling right now is how to find and build their team. So how did you do that? Was it people that you know? Do you recommend working with people? Do you know? I mean, it's like, do you go on LinkedIn these days? Like, what do you do to build a team? Especially I'm talking about kind of like a executive team or a C-suite team or the people closest to you. So first question is, do you work with people that you know? I um, can tell you from experience, and I mean, I hate to say it, um, but that's probably not the best idea sometimes because I feel like we have learned, that's been a, that's been a tough lesson we've learned through through the businesses is bringing on people that we know and trust because you want people that you trust and you feel like if you know them that you trust them and that's always that's never not been the case where you know the, there's been a trust issue it is very challenging though um to build a team and to lead a team if you have people that you are friendly with or comfortable with because sometimes it makes it a little challenging for them to see you as a leader you become more of a of a i don't know it's just it's a little bit more challenging that way um, as far as building the team, that's probably the biggest challenge, honestly, is finding the right people. And we've had to go with the brewery, especially, um, we have navigated through that, um, made some wonderful and amazing choices and some not so great. And some that we came, I mean, out of left field, you're like, oh, whoa, did not see that coming at all. So it is, I mean, it's, it's a trial and error. I, and it's just talking with people, letting people know what you're doing. Um, you know, everybody's resume looks really good and everybody looks good on paper. And so I don't, I don't personally believe in a whole lot with that. Um, even whenever, like, you know, with this job here with, with community hospice, uh, with the communications and they were just like, Andy, do you have your resume? I'm like, oh boy, oh, okay. Let me, you know, let me figure this out. It's just not who I am. I feel like it's so much more of a personal. So talking with people and sitting down and just seeing if it works. Um, and I, you know, unfortunately I do say, you know, it's, it is hard to work with people that you really do know. But you do recommend word of mouth. It's not much in terms of my people. I do. I absolutely do. I feel like if somebody's going to recommend somebody to you, I think most people are pretty aware that if they do that, they're putting themselves on the line more so than any, you know, they, they really are. That's, that's going to come back on them. If the person doesn't work out, it comes back on you because you recommended them. Thank you. That makes sense. Annie, the last 20 months or so have been absolutely crazy. And tell me during that whole time period, did you go through any shifts with your with the brewery? Absolutely, we did. Um, so when COVID hit and everything kind of started, we had to shut down the bars. And we, I mean, we had no clue what it was going to look like. I mean, that's a that's a scary, you know. So we're not, it's not only just our bars, it's all the bars. And that's a big part of our distribution. Um, so we had to make some really tough tough decisions and face a lot of challenges. Um, when the bars opened back up, we were very excited and then they closed back down again. And Greg and I sat down and talked about just making some major changes and some shifts um, with just staff in general, with the way we were doing things, what did we need to, you know, how do we revamp it? We were very fortunate, I think, because for us, it was almost like a, a spring cleaning, you know, like we were able just to kind of really restructure and reorganize and um, get things exactly where we really wanted them. It gave some time, it gave us some downtime to really think about it. We weren't just, it, we, it wasn't like a wheel, we weren't just spinning our wheels still. We were like, okay, let's figure out what we need to do and how to do it. And so we did, we had some major changes um, from everything from our marketing approach to um, the sales approach, even, I mean, even from a staffing approach. What do you think the biggest challenge has been, uh, not just since COVID, but the whole time as a business owner? I, I mean, I think, like you said, it's not balancing it. It's keeping it all, you know, it's keeping it all pulled together and making sure, um, you're everything's getting done and that you're doing I mean you're you it's just you're supporting your family it's a whole different you know there it's just balancing it it's keeping it moving it's making sure you're staying on top of everything that um you're doing it the best way that you can 
I mean, it, it's, it's definitely, it's not easy. I mean, there's a lot of sleepless nights where you're just going, oh my goodness, did we, was that the right choice? Should we have done this or should we have done that? Or, you know, I mean, every time we add something new or expand something within the brewery, it's like, oh no, what is this going to do? Are we going to get a return back on it? This is coming, you know, it's, it's those, it's those decisions and things that you're, you're thinking about, because again, you know, your businesses are what supports your family. And so that's a really, it's different. It's not just, you know, oh, I'm going to go out and open up a business. That business has to be able to sustain our family as well. Well, and there's so much weight to the pressure that you have to sustain other people's families as well. Like when you have like a, you know, a team of people that's working and, you know, that's, that's a big burden as well. Yes. And that's always, that's one of the things that, you know, Greg and I, that's, that is a very, it stays always on us extremely hard. You know, you have to, you keep your doors open because you, these people rely on you um, every day. You know, that's their, that's their livelihood as well. So. All right. So we have one time for one last question. So I'm going to ask you a question, but you might need to think about it first um, okay. is I love like when you, you've gone from literally, if you could rewind the clock to before you even started the brewery or Watts, you know, or the, the juice place say like months before the idea even came to you to think of where you are now, which is a very short window to have like a a, a brewery, a restaurant, like distribution, all the things that you're doing. If you were to go back and give that person advice, it's like initially thinking like, should I do this? Like, what should I do? Like, what, what would you say to her? Cause that's a lot of people watching our show right now. They're the ones being like, could I really do something so big? So what advice do you have for yourself? I mean, I would tell her to go for it. I would say, and I don't even have to think about it, without hesitation, I would say absolutely 100% go for it. Even if, I mean, even if you fail at it, you are going to learn something from it. And life just is going to put you where you need to be. I mean, and I, you know, it, I strongly believe that you go for it, you work it, you learn from it you know, and you can't, I mean, you can't win at it if you don't try. I mean, you just, I, I strongly believe that. That is awesome. Well, it gave me goosebumps. So that, um, I appreciate you saying that. And then if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, like, I know you're so um, welcoming to many people. Is there a best way if somebody has like a question they want to ask you or want to learn more about this? Um, what's the best way to get in touch with you? I mean, through email, Instagram, I mean, any, any of those resources for sure. Um, and also, you know, anything, um, with the foundation, I mean, any of that. So you can, I mean, you can find me. That's Instagram is probably the best though. Wonderful. And we'll have everything linked in our show notes if you're watching this on YouTube. So if you're with us live, as you know, we'd like to have the second half of the show where everybody can ask some questions and interact some more with Annie and can continue this conversation. And if you are on um, YouTube, thank you so much for joining us and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, Annie Tuttle. Thank you, Allison, for um, hosting this great conversation and um, everybody have a good day.